Now, this Torah portion begins with Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. It's the third in our Torah portion readings, the third sense of Simchat Torah, or Yeorit Desita, or Desta Orit, the joy of Jalor. It's called Teleite Wuta Bamarinya, and Lek Lika, Lek Lika, or Go Come Out. Go Come Out. Now, as we have been consulting here with the, uh, uh, what you call this, Wikipedia, the Wikipedia online, if you go there from the free encyclopedia, as we advise the students to go and, and to study and to check out for them, to check out for themselves. We have Lek Lika. We have spelled with the C-H and the K-H, and in and, and this way, Lek Li, because of Schwa, so it's Lek Li, Li, I. The sixth order Ethiopic order, Lek Li, Lika, Lek Lika, or the Shwa, the Shwa, or the Shwa, the sixth order. Now it's the Hebrew for go, or leave, or go for you. It's the fifth and the sixth words in the Parasha, or the Orit Nabab, the Torah portion. And it's the third weekly Torah portion, Parasha, in the annual Hebraic or the Jewish cycle of Torah reading. And it constitutes Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, to Genesis chapter 17, verse 27. Now, we as Hebrews and, and other Jews or OJs, they read it on the third Sabbath or Senbet after the Simchat Torah, generally in October or November. Now, this year, 2011, that portion and this portion is, is read and has begun from November 5th, so November 5th. So if one's want to get a proper groundation of the dating, November 5th. But to computate it for yourself is based on the heavens. Now, this is some of the European, the Eurocentric images, and we're including this in a new book on the Hebrew book of Genesis, including this documentation in it, because we're going to begin here, as we said, and then we will utilize our own art and facts once we understand what the story and what the word is truly saying. But from the Eurocentric interpretation, or one can say uh, racial misinterpretation, this is some of that imagery that has actually been used for Abraham, you know, for Abraham meeting Melchizedek. Melchizedek. Now, the Gedla Adam, or the conflict of Adam, the book of Adam and Eve, the Ethiopic book of Adam and Eve, it actually gives us useful background into Melchizedek, into the Melchizedek. But that scene, the scene where Abraham meets Melchizedek, a better rendition of it would be this particular scene that's found in Senmut's in in uh in Senmut's uh a tomb in Senmut's uh, tomb we find this particular the star of the gods we find the deity the deity right here points to the star and the deity or actually is speaking of the one in the Melchizedek Edek some say this could be Abraham pointing to this particular star and this is Melchizedek right here representing all of the gods or all of the Elohim coming forward. Now, some might interpret this son or this, this, this boy here, some as Yishak, you know what I'm saying, or, or, or Yishak coming forward to him. In a sense, it is actually the first of the whores. There's, there's Haru. There's two Harus. Those who understand the mystery of ancient Egypt know that there are two Horuses. There was the first Horus who was who was almost like the sacrifice or born somewhat lame. And then it was uh, the younger, Horus the younger, and then we have Horus the elder. You understand? And it's clear that Horus the elder would be the Israel type, but the younger would be the Yaakov or the Jacob type. But the meeting of, of Abraham or Abraham meeting with Melchizedek, a better rendition of it, would be this uh, imagery that we show right here because he's meeting with Melchizedek and Melchizedek is representing all of the gods or rather the Ha Elohim 
or the true. He's representing the true God, the true God. So we have this meeting of all of the gods right here with Abraham and Malkaz Edek taken from the same source as the wisdom of of Moses, which was the wisdom of the Egypts. So this image actually in our updated um, version of our Torah portion would replace this sort of image right here, this imagery that is based on uh, Peter Paul Rubens. This is Peter Paul Rubens, Abram and Melchizedek, or Melchizedek, a painting circa 1625. 1625, and what did they know? All they were doing was recreating their own imagery, the imagery of their time, and there's some very demonic stuff in, in this, some very strange stuff that has nothing to do with the Torah or the Scriptures, but the OJs, the other Jews, utilized this sort of image, imagery, you understand, which is inappropriate and incorrect. But a more correct rendition of the background of this, understanding the author or Moses, Mashu, this would be a more correct imagery of the meeting of Melchizedek or Melchizedek and, um, and Abraham. Remember, in this particular portion, Abraham is told to count the stars, to count the stars. Was he just to count the stars? or a particular constellation, a particular constellation of stars. And when we look at some of the ancient Egyptian ideas and understanding of the different stars and the star region and the star patterns, we see the, in the Orion, in the Orion cluster that's also spoken of in the book of Job, it speaks of this particular um, constellation or Orion or Orion. When he's told to count the stars, there must have been a particular portion of the sky that he was looking at or viewing. Now we get to understand better what was behind the reason why Abraham went to Egypt. As we start to look at some of these images and we, like, for example, count the stars here count the stars in this particular imagery. You understand? Now, now, this is the same constellation. This is the same constellation as Orion, as Orion right here. It's the same sort of constellation, right? And he said that his descendants, the true God, or all the gods said to Abraham that his descendants would be as the, the stars you understand, it would be as the stars of the heavens, you know, or the sand of the seas, and, and because of the multitude of the stars, you understand, that he would make his, his seed, his um, posterity, you understand, where he says, in, and Yahweh said to Abraham, after that lot was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art, northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the lands which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and thy seed forever, forever. Now, um, when he also says to Abraham, when he also said to Abraham, that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that's not theirs. It is speaking of what has happened to our ancestors and to us as descendants or as begots in this particular and in this present time. But let us first go to the beginning of this particular portion. As we said that this portion, though we can study it and read it on the Sabbath, this is the portion, this is like the weekly portion. In other words, this is what we will study and what we will meditate on for the week until next Sabbath, until the next sabbatical or Torah portion, which is actually um, uh, uh, Vayera or Vayera or Tegelet Alet, Tegelet Alet. Now, let us touch on, once again, some of the main matters here. Let us go back to 
the 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 basic understanding, the basic teaching here at the wiki site. And let's get to some let's bring up the summary. Now we've touched on the call of Abraham. That's the first matter right here, the call of Abraham. And, and now there's the wife as sister matter. There's Abraham and Lot divide the land. There's this war, this curious war that many still are speculating on what and who this war was. Was this the Ethiopic war? What particular war was this? The war between the four kings and the five. There's the covenant between the pieces. There's Hagar and Ishmael. And then there's the covenant of circumcision. The covenant of circumcision. And we hope to present and post a teaching, expanded teaching on the covenant of circumcision. But beginning off here with the call of Abraham. This is another artist rendition and which artist is this this is Gustave Dore or Gustave Dore Abraham or Abram journeying into the land of Canaan is from an engraving by Gustave Dore from 1865 La La Saint Bible or the Saint Bible as is contained in the Saint Bible this is from their artist and their imagination that this is Abram um, journeying to the land of Canaan. But it's interesting that his father, Tara, or Terah, is also journeying to Canaan, but he gets sidetracked at Kara or Karan, Haran, and he dies there. Now, here's where our story begins, that God, Elohim, told Abram or Abraham, known as Abram at that time, to leave his native land and his father's house for a land that Elohim would show him, promising to make him, make of him a great nation, bless him, and make his name great, bestow those, bless those, excuse me, bless those who bless him, or bestow blessings upon those who bless him, and curse those who curse him, according to Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. So we go to Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. In the Schofield Study Bible, we have the fourth dispensation, the promise from the call of Abram to the giving, to the giving of Torah, to the giving of the Orit, the Torah. Genesis chapter 12 and 1 to Exodus chapter 19 and 8. This is this particular this is what we're dealing with in this particular portion. So let's bring this back to Abram and to the map right here. So we can see a, a, a map reference and a truer to life um, uh, word picture, art and fact, you understand, of our ancestor Abraham, the father of the faithful. Now it says, the Lord, or Yahweh, had said to Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, to a land that I will shew thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And, it says, I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth, that curseth thee, and in thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Bamarinya basma wa wal wa manifest kudus ahadu amlak orita zafit reta miraf asara hulet. Kakuter and the Milo, Egaziabi, Harim, Abram, Minna, Alo, Ka Agarihi, Ka Zamedoche, Hin, Ka Zamedoche, Him, Ka Abate, Him, Beta, Talete, Ine, Wodema, Sayihi, Midera, Witta, Talaka, His Bim, Madarig, Halo, Ebarik, Halo, Simhinima kabrawalo, beberaketimahun, 
Yemiya baraku hinnim mai barakalo. Yemiya rega mu hinnim me reg malo. Yemidara negadochi mohulu abe ante ye barakalo. Ye barakalo be ante ye barakalo. Now this is verses 1, 2, 3. Now, Abram in the land. Now, this section of Abram in the land concerns the worship, communion, and promise. Now, the fourth dispensation is something that the Schofield has a very good um, footnote and a very good uh, uh, referential to. Now, we said earlier we're going to touch on the metaphysical Bible dictionary of Abram, of the name Abram, Abram. Not Abraham yet, but Abram first. So metaphysically, Abram is the name that the author of Genesis, Mashu or, or Musa or Moshe, Moses, gave to the quality through which man has faith in the forces invisible, in the forces that are not visible, because people were just seeing and believing. They saw an idol, they believed in the idol, they believed the idol can do this and that. But Abram's consciousness was crossing over and had crossed over from that low degree to a higher degree of spiritual evolution, or one can say involution. When this faith is concentrated upon the Ahadu Amlak, upon Yahweh Ahad, upon the one source, the one God, a God consciousness is established and man intuitively knows that he is in communication with the ever-living source of all existence. And this is what makes Abraham so important and Abraham, Father Abraham, so great, because he was the father of that faith or that consciousness that was in communication with the ever-living source of all existence. He was able, his faith, like I said, we walk by faith, not by sight, you understand? But what is faith? What is faith? And in our Bibles, if we go to another, I think it's another chapter 11, if I'm correct, and that's Hebrews chapter 11, and in Hebrews chapter 11 talks about the superiority of the faith way, and here's the sphere, the sphere of faith, or the alem of faith. The world of faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So Abraham was the father of the faith because he had the substance of that which was expected, you understand, and the evidence of that which was not seen by the physical eyes. For by it the elders, the Shemagala watch, they obtained a good report. Through faith we understand or we overstand through faith, that the worlds, the Alamat, were framed by the what? By the word of God, by by the oracle of Ha Elohim, so that the things which are seen, that we see, and that were seen, were not made of things which do, which do appear, which do appear. And then when we get to verse um, 8, Verse 8 to verse 19 in Hebrews chapter 11, it gives us some very important understanding and background of what we're dealing with right here. And let's, let's bring up the, the Yota or the Iota, and let's go to the, the Hadith, the Hadith Kidan or the New Covenant or the Ibrawiyan. Let's go to Hebrews and let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. And let's go to Hebrews chapter 11 and verse um, verse uh, 8 in the parallel, side by side, the Yamarinya and the King James. Here it says in verse 8, Abra, Abraham yetabalo aristadurgo li kebelo wadalo sifra le motat beimneta tazze wadetima in the mihed. Sayawik wata, the key word wata, remember Bamrinya is called to lay test, separate wata and come out, separate and come out. In the Hebrew is lek lika, 
you know what I'm saying? But the 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 pure language, the pure the purified, the seven the, the, the seven times in the furnace of fire, purification of the metaf kedus of Nugus and Neges gives us the clarity, the inside of the true mind of God in first telete, separate yourself, with uh, and come out. Now here it says by faith Abraham or Abraham when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive or li ebelo to Kabbalah because he could Kabbalah now the unseen things he could receive the un- unseen things li ebelo to receive should after receive for a arist. He was able to receive an inheritance he obeyed. But in faith, it says. In faith. In the King James, that's left out, unfortunately. But it says, But in subjective faith, he was under orders. He was obedient. But And he went out, not knowing, Sayawik. Whither he went, where they him in the mihade. He didn't know where he was going. He he didn't know where, he, but he went out in in faith. You understand? He went out in faith. And what is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen. And this is this is high science. You understand? Faith and truth is high science. It's not no make be lie Eve. And here it says, by faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country. So by faith it says, la in gadocha in the mihon betesfak ala beteseto agar bedin kwa noro. He sukud. He's tabernacled. He dwelt in a tent, right? It says, Yan, yet tesfak al abarot, abarot, kamiya warsu, ka yishak inna, ka yaik ob gar, in the mets atenya bemne tekemet By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles or dwelling in a tent, like dwelling in a sukkah dwelling in a tabernacle, dwelling in a hut, dwelling in a booth, dwelling in a tent. With who? With Yishak and Yaakov, with Isaac and Jacob, the ears, the ears with him of the same promise, of the same tesla, of the same expectation. Now, here's the key. Verse 10, it says, Mesereta yalatin egaziavi her yesaratina yefet aratina katama yet abuka nebarina. For he looked for a city which hath what? Foundations, or Bamarinya here is the singular. He looked for a city that had the what? The foundation, the Meseret, the base. That's the Ethiopic or the Amharic base. He looked for a city that had the Masaret. It's interesting because um, the word uh, that he used, Qaeda or Al-Qaeda, Qaeda, like Qaeda, Al-Qaeda. Qaeda means base. Here, Bamarini is the Masaret. Now, you might know this um, Misarata. You've heard that in the news in Libya, Misarata, a Masaret. You understand? There's a Masaret uh, there too, a base. You understand? But he, he looked for a city that has what? Foundations. Whose what builder and maker is Elohim? Whose builder and maker is Gizyavihir? Is is the God of all? You understand? Or all the gods? In other words, the God of all, the true God, the builder, the real builder, the real Mason. You understand? The real. This is the grand architect. He looked for the city that was built by the true grand architect. Kut verse eleven. It says, Tesfa yeset owa yetamene in the hone selequat erech Sara raswa degmo idamewa in qua calefe de huala zarina lemet lemetness hailin beimne tagenech. It says, Through faith also, not just Abraham. So it wasn't. Only, you understand, it wasn't only Abram that was able spiritually to download, you understand, and, and, and work and apply such, such faith. 
You understand? But we find that it was his sister wife, it, it was Sarah, Sarah or Sarah, as well as it says in verse 11, through faith also Sarah herself received what? Strength, chayil, spiritual, overcoming, power. She received God's power to conceive seed to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was what past age when she was past the usual girly girly age of giving birth she was able to conceive seed and was delivered of a child because she did what she judged him faithful who had promised she judged him faithful who had promised and it wasn't only the one God, the true God, but it's also her husband. You understand? Because the promise was given in order to from Elohim to Abram and Abram to all those who were of his house. And Sarah, you understand, in that, in that queen's position or that consort position, she also, as the, as the sun illuminates and the moon reflects, she also reflects such wisdom because it said that she judged or she accounted she accounted him faithful who had who had promised and then in verse 12 it says selezi degmo bebizatacho wa inda samai kokeba inda maya kwatarim bebahir darla inda le ashwa ye nebruta ye motena so inkwa ka mesalo wa kandu wa tawaladu therefore sprang there even one and him as good as dead, therefore sprang there even one, and that one was as him that was as good as dead, so many as the stars of the what? The stars of the sky. We've just been pointing to that, to the stars of the sky in what? In multitude, in manyness, the bizatacho, and as the sand, which is by the what? The sea shore, innumerable, the seashore innumerable. Now, what this shows us very, very, um, very, very clearly, you understand, is how faith is working itself out, subjective faith. You understand how we, we focus on the object, the amen, and then within us we produce the fruit, the imnet. Now, here it says that these all died in faith, not having received, the promises or the fullness of these promises, the fitum, the perfection of these things, but having seen them afar off, they saw them, they had spiritual vision, and were persuaded of them, convinced of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. It's like that they were, it was like our kingdom was not really of this world. Almost like we're strangers and, and pilgrims on the earth, in the world. You understand? So here's another ET or extraterrestrial or, or alienation to this world that has been taken over by the fallen angels, the serpents, and the reptilians. That they were what? Strangers and pilgrims just passing through. Inezi hulu amno motu yeteset acho in yetesfak ala lagen yumina daru gena karuk ahono ayutina te salamut be midarituma in gadochina met atenyo chindi honu tamenu. Now it's interesting that. They did not receive the fullness of the promises. They received certain promises, but not the fullness. When it says they did not receive the promises, the fullness. But having seen them, they had the vision of these promises where afar off. And they were what? They were persuaded of them. And it says that, and they, they embraced you understand they what they they embraced them and they also admitted or confessed they had faith in the heart and their consciousness and they spoke on these things they confessed these things they were persuaded even when people say no that's not real you don't see it and that's not what's going on you got to get with the program now the reptilians they was like no they confessed what they knew and what they saw in the vision and this was the strength 
of their, obje- their, their subjective faith or the imnet. Here it says, in the yemilut le enarsu yemihon no win agar in the ya felugu ya malika taluna for they that say such things. See, for those who say such things, they declare plainly that they seek a what? That they seek a country. That they sought a agar. They sought a country. A certain type of country wherein righteousness dwells. That they sought a country. They were not content to be in Ur of the Chaldees. They were not content to be in the land of the reptilians or the land of the mixed multitudes. They were not content with, with the status quo. You understand? They were not content with the status quo. There was a greater agenda which they confessed. Verse 15, it says, Yan, ye what uvetin agar asbo wabihonu, liya melesu gize, behonelacho nabur. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. In other words, if they kept thinking about where they came out, they would have, like, returned. They say, you know what? Things were better like the, like, the, like the Israelites. When the Israelites were in the wilderness, after all they seen, they wanted to go back because of, you know, the type of food and the garlic and the leeks and the lifestyle, the clubs and all that kind of stuff, you know, that they were doing back in Egypt, just like nowadays with folks so forth and so on. But they were greater than this. If they had been mindful, like if they had thought about it, if they considered it, they, they didn't think about that. They, they didn't think this is teaching us not that they should have thought about it so they could have gone back to where they came from. No, that they didn't think about that. You understand? They were not mindful, and therefore they didn't have opportunity to return, or that was not their thing. They didn't want to go backward. They wanted to go forward. Verse 16 says, Ahun gin yemi belut owin arsum. But now, Ahun, again, however, now, they desire a what? A better country. That is a heavenly. So they were the. This is interesting right here because we're talking about these are my aliens and so forth and so on. It seems that the very heart of what the Bible is talking about has a very um, prominent alienation to the present status quo of things, especially among the patriarchs. Here we have Abraham and Sarah. Being, and their descendants being alienated from the worldly, but they were looking at the Samayawi Agar, at, an, at a heavenly, you understand, a heavenly country, wherefore God is not ashamed, that Gizyavihir is not ashamed to be called their God. They're not ashamed, you know, like we're not ashamed to call Rastafari, John Rastafari, Abu Kadus, Kedamawi Hala Salasi, in the name of Jesus Christos, our God. For he hath been, done what for us? He hath prepared for them a city. He has prepared for them a city. And this is what we see in Revelation. There's a heavenly city. There's the Adesitu to Jerusalem that is to come down from the heavenly. So why are these men and people fighting against or preparing to fight against, like in all their movies and with all their black ops stuff, fight against the so-called um, aliens? You understand? Why are, they, well, why are they preparing to fight against them? You understand? Unless they must be of the seed, spiritually or otherwise, of the rebels, of the evil men. Now here, verses 17, let's go on to verse 17 to 18. Verse 17 to 18 and, and, and 19, actually, we'll conclude this part here concerning Abraham, at least in this teaching and feeding um, in Hebrews chapter 11. Because it, we have to rightly divide the word of truth. So the Spirit said, let's touch on this as we get a background to the, the third sabbatical reading and feeding to lo te 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 le te yikrita te le te wita or lik lek lika. Here it says, Abraham, bete fetene bete gizei yishak ina be mnetak arabe, tesfanak ala yetek ebelo, 
በይስሐቀ ዘር ይጠራልhal የተባለለት ርሱ ማንዳል ጁና ቀረበ by faith abraham when he was tried or he was tested he offered up yishak and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son his number one son his and lidju his one son that's what that or what is begotten or only begotten means the number one the andi lidju the and lidju his number one son of whom it was said that in Yishak shall thy seed be called now you heard that wait in Isaac the seed will be called yet he was willing to sacrifice that that which the seed in, in other words it goes against the the point of what Abraham did that was so um spectacular and great here is that he was in a time where people actually sacrificed their children and he thought that this is what he had to do too for the true god and he figured that if they did this for idols you know saying sacrifice their children for idols that couldn't deliver i'm going to do it for he who is actually benefiting and doing blessing for me you know saying even though it hurts me because i love this boy i love this child this is this is what makes it so great you know saying so here but he didn't have to that's that's the beauty of it so he learned that the true god did not did not desire such bloody so called sacrifices like one killing their own children but to sacrifice that love and even infatuation to some extent that abraham had on his child and any parent you know can can i think can know that that there is a certain level where one gets so infatuated with their children that they're willing to sacrifice God for the sake of their children you understand and that leads them to the to the deeds of the evil men and the reptilians but verse um asarazet ang verse 19 says that gizyabihir ka mutanin kwa liyas nasau indi chalo asbo alna kaziam degmo be misale agenyo accounting he accounted you see he was an accountant or he com he computated you understand he spiritually computated you understand that elohim that that ha elohim ha shem buruku was able even from such a time he had accounted that that the true god who has already is the creator of heaven and earth and all of this not the idols but the true god if he desires a sacrifice even of my son then so be it I'll be willing to give it because he accounted that the true god was able to raise him up even from the dead he he was able he had the power of resurrection so the so resurrection was even known to father abraham and especially by father abraham from whence also he received him in a figure Now see this is the key right here where we know when it talks about Moses being learned in all the wisdom of the Egypts here's the key right here this last part kaziam degmo be misale agenyo which is turgum or translated from whence also he received him in a figure the misale is a mythological type he received yishak in that mythological type and what mythological type is that the osar asher haish blesses the man osar haish osar asher ashur is the man you know so he received him in a mythological type where it says so, so abraham in the time that he lived these ancient so called gods or religions or mythologies or speculations of god were known you understand but from what he understood he said definitely these idols are nothing but this true god who i'm getting to know you understand who is the creator of heaven and earth who i lift up my hand and my head and my heart and my all to if he's asking me for my number one son this is difficult this is really difficult by my number one wife by sara as well this is extremely difficult but if he is the creator of heaven and earth and the sea and all that is there in then you know what i receive this in the type that's intended because he of of all would be able to raise him up this this is what's so key about verse 19 hebrews 11 and 19 
You know what I'm saying? Which is in the reverse. You can say it's nine one one one. You know what I'm saying? But eleven nineteen it says accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, even from the dead, which is resurrection. The theme of resurrection. From whence also he received him in a figure. He received him in a type. And this type and figure in the next sabbatical portion is going to be further um, explicated and illuminated in Tegeletlet or the the Vayera, the Vayera, the, the, the revealing or appeared when Yahweh uh, Elohim, the true Elohim, then appeared. But first, in this particular sabbatical portion, we have the, the priest or the high priest of El Elyon, of the true God, appearing to Abraham, not even just Abraham, but Abraham and Sarah. So this is the fourth dispensation, all dealing with the tesfa, all dealing with the promise. Now what's so interesting that when we go into the story and we do the, what they call the extra biblical or interlineal interpretations as the OJs or other Jews have done from their Eurocentric perspective. When we go from our Ethio um, um, Afro Shemitic perspective, we get to see in the name Eliazar, Lazarus, we see some interesting keys and connections in the name um, Lazarus, because in this name Lazarus, we have a very key connection with Eli Osar. Eli Osar or the one that is known as um, Osiris, you understand? The one who is known as Osiris. And Osiris, the name Osiris and Lazarus is Afro-Shemitically one and the same. El Osar, or gods, we can interpret it as gods Osar. So when it says that Abraham received this in a type, the type that he received this in is the Osar, the Osar type. So when we look at Hebrews chapter 11 and 19 connected with the resurrection from the dead, so, so we get to see that the Osar and the Horus types are there, where Abraham was almost, they say, was almost as good as dead. He was, he was, he was uh, you know, um, 99, 100. He was very old. He was past the age and even saw up. You understand? They said her womb either was dead or she was also old. She was past the age. But Abraham accounted. What did he account? He accounted that the true God was able to do this. The maker of heaven and earth and the seas was able to do it, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also, he received him in a figure, Kaziam Degmo Bemisale, Bemisale Agenio, Bemisale. And when we look at now the Egyptian, remember, he came from the east and he went to the west. He, he goes to Egypt for a time. You understand? When he goes to Egypt for the time, and we find this, that, that um, in Egypt... Some say that the blessing was lost to the Israelites because of the dispensation that they spent in Egypt. But there's a footnote connection in the Schofield that um, the Dekam as Amorit, the disciples, brothers and sisters, you need to study the footnote here in the Schofield. And if you don't have the Schofield, you can go to our website and you can download it off of the study page for free as a PDF to be used on your mobile or media devices, your computer, your tablet or your, your smartphone, and you can read it and study it, study it there as well. Now, let's go back to the call. Let's return to the, the call of Abraham and what's contained in this sabbatical Torah portion, reading and feeding. 